classes wearing stripper shoes, but when I do, it's to review a 2019 Lexus LC500. Hi guys, for all you new folk, I am Sarah, and this is an abandoned warehouse that I took a $100,000 car to. Interesting choice. Anyway, I'm reviewing this car today and telling you why I feel this is the more important Toyota Lexus sports car revival, even more so than the Mark V GR Supra. Because this, in essence, is a modern Lexus SC400, which was based on the same chassis as the Mark IV Supra. But this nailed it. The interior of the LC500 is no letdown. When you see the exterior of this car, you're like, dude, this is a work of art. And you should expect the interior to be just as nice. And it is without going over the top. And that's what I like about it. Everything in here is of quality with the exception of one area that I found that I didn't care for. And that is this center cubby area where there's a cup holder. It's the only thing in the interior of this car. Only thing in the interior of this car that feels cheap. Everything else in here is on point. A lot of people have complained about this touch pad right here for the Lexus interface for your infotainment system. I actually like it and for 2019 it's slightly revised in here, but I've always liked it to begin with. I think it's really easy to use, it's intuitive, it's not too shaky on the screen unlike the little toggle that you find in the IS. And the volume knob is just perfect placement in relation to the rotary dials on the sides to adjust your station. So when you're listening to like XM Cirrus radio, you can adjust your volume with your middle finger and then roll the stations with this finger. So it's, it's one handed motion and you don't even have to look down to adjust it. You get really used to it, which is nice. This is the first Lexus I've ever reviewed that has Apple CarPlay. That's nice because I have an iPhone. Huge fan of the 10 speed automatic transmission here, however, to select from park to neutral to drive is really awkward when you first jump in the car. I found it kind of hard to use, but once I figured it out, it's easy and it makes sense. And what I kind of like about it is when you're going from drive to manual mode, straight back is manual mode, and then you just kind of loop around to the left and that's your drive. So it's really easy to switch back and forth while you're driving down the road. I like that. And right below it is a little ricer button for the rear wing to pop it up if you want up all the time instead of having it come up to aid with downforce like it's designed to. And of course, the really cool gauge cluster that when you push the button on the steering wheel, it moves the dial over to the right to give you an extra menu, which is, this is awesome. I like that. It's kind of like old school meets new school. Speaking of old school, Lexus still has the analog clock on the uh, dash, which is really weird with all the other digital stuff going on, but I hope they don't ever get rid of it because it's Lexus and it makes sense. Come here, kitty. Come here, kitty. Oh, I scared him. This is straight gangster right here. Check this out. Watch the door handle. Why, thank you, car. How do I do this? Unsnap the seatbelt. Pull the lever forward. Uh, there you go. Now let's see if I can fit back here. Oh. <laughs> I did change my shoes because I don't want to scratch the door sills. They're carbon fiber. All right, let's see if I can fit. Oh God. Ow. All right. So my toes are stuck underneath the uh, frame of the seat. Mildly comfortable. It hugs your feet nicely. Uh, my head is resting gently on the back window and my ear actually almost comes in contact with the glass uh, and my knees are shoved into the back of the seat but it did sense that and go forward a little bit this is uh, all in all quite comfortable if you're five foot eleven i totally recommend sitting back here okay this is a pointless back seat <laughs> How, why, why would you design a car like this? 
You had me fooled, Lexus. I thought this was some kind of fancy raw carbon fiber. It's actually just fiberglass like you find on the core support of a Nissan 350Z. This, on the other hand, is a carbon fiber roof, part of a performance package. Pop in the trunk, please. It's a cute spot for them to put the button. Haha. -ha. No need to worry about how many golf clubs you can fit in the back of this thing, because if you're driving one of these, you're already winning. And you should be hauling nothing but trophies. It feels like they shaved a bunch of kittens to make this trunk lining material soft. Anyway, the taillights on this car are the craziest thing I've ever seen on a production car before. It has this weird tunnel effect, like the light is echoing through the taillight. These right here are factory 21 inch wheels and they don't even look big on this car. It's so crazy. And yeah, Six piston monoblock calipers in the front, four piston in the rear with two piece rotors. That's what's up. And this thing stops too. And there you have it. This is exactly where the seat was positioned when I was sitting in the back. And as you can see, I'm definitely comfortable. I can actually drive with my teeth and just bite the steering wheel and turn. All jokes aside though, these seats are super comfy. They're finished in Alcantara suede and leather. The bolstering, for me, the seat's a little bit wide, so I bounce around a little bit, but I'm skinny, so they're just super comfy. And the climate control in the seat is done with your climate control for the entire car. So if you crank the AC, your AC in your seat cools your butt. If you crank the heat, the seat will crank up its heat and heat your butt. That's how it should be. Truthfully though, I'm really reaching to try to find faults with the interior of this car. I want my review to be fair and balanced and not be all pros when it comes to this car view. And this is a six figure car, which is mind blowing to me. This is the most expensive car I've ever driven, but uh, I truly feel it is worth six figures. This car feels like a $100,000 car. And what's more important is the exclusivity, exclusivity, exclusiveness. Words are tough. It's time to drive the LC500. I've actually been driving it for like three days now, but it's time for me to drive it for you guys. Cause it's a car view. We're gonna give it the beans from a dig. Manual mode. Sport Plus. Ready? Oh, okay. Yep, it doesn't lag. Oh. Whoa. G meter is up on the gauge cluster. No one behind me. Let's see how this thing breaks. Holy f my eyes are still shaking my head. I don't know how, I don't know how many G's I pulled. I couldn't see anything other than just space and time flying by me. This thing stops. Good. Hello Wing and welcome to Garage Science with Sarah. So, the LC500 behind me. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I feel this is more important of a Lexus Toyota throwback to an iconic sports car because the new GR Supra has got a lot of controversy for the fact that it uses the B58 power plant from a BMW. Whereas this behind me, it's all Lexus, baby. So, this has a five liter naturally aspirated V8 that puts out 471 horsepower and 398 pound feet of torque at 4,800 RPM. And it's paired to a 10 speed direct shift automatic transmission that fires off shifts in 0.12 of a second, which is half the speed of a blink of a human eye, just for reference. That, that is impressive. But what's more important about it is it's a GT car. It's big, it's heavy, it's super luxurious. It is fast, it's just not as fast as other cars in that price range. I just pulled a Scotty Kilmer on you and appeared in a different location of my garage. I do that from time to time. 
Anyway, I am a fan of the new GR Supra. However, I don't feel this car got the recognition it deserves. This thing is incredible. I mean, look at the top strut mounts. They look like upside down star fruits. And if you also pay attention to where these are located in relation to the engine, you can see that the engine sits fairly far back, which gives this thing a near perfect weight distribution. This one is also equipped with a performance package, which gives you variable rear steering with also a Torsen LSD that is standard and a variable steering rack along with an active rear wing and a bunch of carbon fiber and Alcantara goodies. That's what's up. That's violent. Oh my God, dude. I don't care if this thing is not fast on paper. It's an experience. behind the wheel of this thing and driving it aggressively is like none other. It's exhilarating. And it, it it's a total mind f is the best way to put it. I, this car is, this car is good. It's really good. The performance of the LC500 may be a letdown to some people when you're looking at how much the price is over a hundred thousand. This one actually is a hundred and five thousand. And the zero to sixty is in the mid fours, and the quarter mile I believe is in the low thirteens. Overall, it's not a super fast car. You could go buy a brand new Mustang GT with a 10-speed auto in it and it would destroy this thing in a drag race. But it doesn't matter. It's a grand touring car, it's luxurious gets the job done when it comes to performance. It's just a nice place to be. It's a nice place to drive and it breaks necks wherever you go. And that's what's important about it. If you guys have never seen one of my car reviews before, I do what's called the bean score. I know, I'm weird. It's a rating of one to five beans based on the feeling you get in your gut when you give it the beans. Anyway, the 2019 Lexus LC500 for all you fancy folks, is going to get a rating of 2.5 of the finest imported espresso beans. It's exclusive. It's not a Mercedes, it's not a BMW, it's not your stereotypical luxury car. And that's what I like about this. So if you can afford a $100,000 car in this category, go for it. I'm telling you, it's worth it. Anyway, I'll see you guys soon for another video. I'm getting the hell out of this warehouse. Bye. I got my space pants. Ooh, I feel the AC blowing on the back of my thighs. That feels good.